What's going on? 22 here with my bi-weekly pulls and reviews. Let's start things off with Creature of the Black Lagoon Lives. This is issue four. Cover is done by Jenny Frizen. This is the conclusion of the Creature of the Black Lagoon Lives storyline. And what can I say? I'm honestly just glad that it's here. We have got... Darwin has captured Katie and wants to turn her into a creature. Like he's turned himself into a creature because he feels one with the creature. Anyways, the creature comes to her rescue and she winds up finishing Darwin off. And it leaves you wondering who the monster really is. This was written by Rom V and Dan Waters. I'm, I've, I don't know. I, this is probably the best issue out of the whole thing, honestly, and this even isn't that good. I, I, I can't recommend the story at all. The next thing I'll probably try is the Dracula story. I've heard really good things about it. I know Frankenstein's getting ready to come out. I'm probably not going to jump on that because I was never a big Frankenstein fan. But this, this was just, this was a big letdown. With it being the creature, with it being Rom V attached to it, this, this is a big letdown. The best thing about this whole series was the covers. They had some amazing covers done by some amazing artists throughout this. So they really did have some really good cover buys if you were a Creature fan. But the story, not so much. So I, my suggestion, pass on this one. This was a cover buy right here, The Incredible Hulk number 14. This features Gabriel Delato cover art. Honestly, I'm disappointed in this one. I, I saw where he was going to be doing a Hulk. I thought that'd be really, really cool. And I just don't know how excited I am about his version of the Hulk. I mean, it's good. Don't get me wrong. I guess I just had it pictured differently in my head. But nonetheless, it's in the collection now. And that's where it'll be. Invisible Iron Man number 20. Really dig this cover by Kel Noog. This is the last issue of this volume of Iron Man. There is another volume that is coming out though, so be on the lookout for that. Iron Man number one, I have yet to read this at all. I've gotten, I don't even know that I've gotten halfway through the series. So I definitely need to do some catching up on this, especially while I got like about a month gap before that new number one comes out. This is written by Jerry Dugan. And yeah, the finale of that volume of Iron Man. John Constantine, Hellblazer, Dead in America, number seven. I'm so tired of this book. I'm, I'm done. I'm done with it. I am done with this book. This was originally supposed to be either an eight or nine issue series. I've got up until issue nine, I know for sure, that is coming to me. And apparently it's done really well. A lot of people are digging it. And so they've extended it on to 11. From what I understand, issue 9 is going to be a filler type issue where the main story will finish with issue 8. This story, just over the top, it's... I don't even understand half of it, but half of what's going on in it. It's a, a mystery type deal. That's go, But, like, John's in a relationship with this dude ghost and it's i don't know it's freaking weird and they're going talking about history and time and going back to where all these other weird dudes were doing things in the woods it's i don't know it's just it's just freaking weird y'all it's weird and like not in a good way so i'm done with it i'm totally done with it if you're enjoying it hey more power to you glad you found something you like but me this is not for me at all so, issue 9 will be the last one that I have. I will read up until that point, but that's that's it. I took it off my pull list. I know I'm, I'm very much a completionist, but when I saw that this was like going to issue 11, I was like, no. No, I'm not doing that. No. I'm, I'm, I'm just cutting it off now. Done. Done. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 1. This is written by Alabama boy himself, Jason Aaron, along with artwork from Joel Jones. This is a continuation of the previous IDW 
run of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but this is the new jumping on point with current now writer Jason Aaron. Raphael is in prison. Now, I didn't keep up with the last run, so I had no idea exactly how Raph is in there. And I think it's meant to be that way. It seems like the turtles are dispersed, which is another reason why there's the Night Watcher series that's coming out as well that talks about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles not being around, and so there need to be a protector of New York. Raph is in prison, but we see that he's got to deal with the warden, and there's paperwork on that. The foot have come caused some issues and stolen the paperwork this so far is freaking fantastic absolutely fantastic there is some graphic stuff in here which goes along with like old turtle type things or type content uh Raphael's size were used to impale a man in this i'm not saying it was raf that did raf that did it but they do you do get you do see that and you do see blood and stuff like that it's not gruesome it's not gory or anything but you do see that i believe there's some language in here as well so maybe not necessarily for kids but man this was this this is a good jumping on point if you're if you have been wanting to get into turtles but didn't know where to start now is the time pick up this fantastic this issue was fantastic the artwork is fantastic as well Thundercats number six. This cover is done by David Nakayama. I also picked up the last action figure variant as well. So glad that I'm done with those, honestly, because they were they left more to be desired, really. Um or however that saying goes going back to this cover this cover is lying to you for the most part we do see the vultures the uh, mut mutants and uh, panther is driving the tank and that's pretty much the entire issue now he winds up fighting the vultures and this is this was a fun action-packed issue right here this was really really fun compared to the last issue where it was Chitara and Lion-O talking about destiny and like how he's to be a leader and whether or not he should be and all this other jazz. This right here, this, this was a fun action-packed issue. And it was just Panthro driving a tank fighting off mutants. The writer, I can't remember his name right now. I believe he also did the artwork for this issue, so it's back to the original like first run first trade i guess of artwork it's not bad it's, it's good artwork just know that there will be a difference between issue five and this one here this was good this was fun walking dead deluxe number 93 cover done by charlie adler and dave mccagg as well as the artwork in this written by robert kirkman this is the B cover. All these deluxe covers, the B covers are the original covers, but done in like a different tone, different shades. So I like, I've always, if you've watched this before, you know that I'm doing that to kind of like pair them up with my first printings of The Walking Dead. So I have not read this, but it will definitely be going in the PC. Next up are my dollar finds. Now, MyComicShop.com, which is where it, this pretty much my comic book store, it's where I get all my subscription stuff through. On Tuesdays, they have like Dollar Bin Tuesdays, is what I call them, and they last the all week, but they change them up at Tuesday night. So that's you know I, I set some time aside just to jump in there right at the beginning of it because a lot of stuff gets picked through and get pulls out quick. But this is the stuff that I got from there. Here is Green Lantern number nine. This is a B cover, and I really, really dig this cover. It's a minimal trade dress. On top of that, it's just a super awesome, awesome looking cover. This is part of the a Grant Morrison run. I believe this was done. I believe this was the run prior to the Jeremy Adams run that's going on right now. So this may be like that Green Lantern season two, but I can't remember exactly. But I wanted to get some of those issues of that and maybe read that. I've heard a lot of good things about Grant Morrison and Green Lantern. So I wanted to give it a try. 
Especially when I can get really good coverage like this for a dollar. Another one from that same Green Lantern volume. Here's Green Lantern number 10. Again, another B cover that I just thought was really, really nice. A series that I've been wanting to read, especially because I've loved his Doctor Strange series that's been going on right now, and that is Strange number one. Now this is the Scotty Young variant, and I picked up not one, but three copies of it for a dollar a piece. I just thought this was a great deal. There are several other ones there, so I didn't feel bad for picking up, you know, a few of them. And I feel like this could be like a nice giveaway to give to somebody, uh, especially since it's number one and it's got a young. This is written by Jed McKay, who's doing the current Doctor Strange run that I really, really enjoy. And so I'm kind of starting to go back and see, like I want to get the death of Doctor Strange and I want to read that. And then I want to read Strange, which is this where Clea takes over as the Sorcerer or Sorceress Supreme. And then it leads into the Doctor Strange run that I'm on right now and him being back. So, yeah, I, I, I got several issues, different covers of this Strange number one. I don't know why they keep finding me, but I keep picking them up because they're, they're ones that I really like and I really enjoy and they have really cool covers. So, yeah. Here is a Venom number one. This is a Gabriel Delato variant for this Venom number one. And I, I'm not even like... I don't really like his Venom all that much, but I saw this and I saw Dollar and I was like, yeah, yeah, let's get that. Let's get that. So, nice addition to the Gabriel Delato collection. Not only do they put comic books, single issues on sale for a dollar, they also have trades sometimes that you'll find for a dollar. And so I've been collecting these as well. This is the Walking Dead trade number five. as well as the trade number 25. I figure if you can pick a trade up for a dollar, that's a really, really good buy. And Walking Dead is one that I've been trying to steadily pick up, is just pick up these trades. I've been really lucky and have found a lot of these for a dollar and less, honestly. So uh, it's filling out quite nicely. Uh, I don't know that I'll be able to go all the way with a dollar or less pickups, but I'm going to keep trying, so. There you have it. Thank y'all so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments what is it that you're reading and what do you think of these that I have. Let me know if you're reading the same issues, the same books that I am reading. Thank y'all so much for watching. You can find me on the Comically Comics podcast every Monday on all podcatchers, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify. That same episode will be on our YouTube channel, Comically Comics Podcast on Wednesday, so check us out there. If you haven't already, you can find me on Instagram, eBay, and Shortbox at 22 underscore comics. Once again, thank y'all so much for watching, and as always, y'all have a good one.